one, two, three. Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Weekly Infrastructure Team Meeting. Today we are the 21 of March, 2023. Around the table, we have myself, Damien Duportal. We don't have Hervé yet. Uh, Mark Waits, Stefan Merle, Bruno Varten, and Kevin Martins are there. Um, announcements. Let's start with today's weekly. The, I haven't checked yet. Tag has uh, been placed about an hour ago. Um, okay. Final change log has not been posted yet, but Kevin has created the the draft updates for it to correct to make it ready for final. Um, don't know when that will be ready because last I checked, ci.jenkins.io was still down uh, while in progress security update for plugins. Okay, uh, it's back up. It's oh, it back is. Up oh, thank you. Minutes. Very good. Okay, very good. Delayed due to security advisory should be good in next hours. I haven't haven't checked yet the the packaging part, especially the Docker one, but I assume that should be quickly there. So no issue on the release process, right? I have not I have not checked the logs and currently don't have access to the to the Thanks. VPN. So that's there's no harm. We can trust that Alex Brandis and others will take care of it. Okay. Well, oh, no oh, somebody's looking at it. You've, you've, exactly. it's open. Oh, I'm very in good. Right now. I'm master. Great. Yeah, okay. Same. So we're okay. green. That, that says we're good for that level. All the other checks can be performed without requiring VPN access. So that's great. Exactly. I uh, haven't looked yet at the release, weekly release. Uh, Console output. I'm looking at the packaging part that was successful. Everything is green. So perfect. Great. Right. Um, up, upcoming check to be done. Docker change log. Okay. Um, we are the Jenkins plugin advisory today that has just been released. Um, security advisory today, today on plugins. So as we said, CI Jenkins IO is, is back. Uh, the advisory has been public, published on Jenkins IO a few minutes ago. So everything looks good. So I haven't seen any error. Uh, so please update your instances and your plugins. <laughs> Uh, upcoming calendar next week uh, will be, uh, the next weekly will be 28th of March, as usual. Uh, I don't remember the version, do I've lost track? Uh, 2.378, or, or you say the upcoming LTS? Um, 2.387, oh, next weekly is 3.97. Yeah. 97, okay. Right. Next LTS will be 387.2, and that will be on April 5. Of April, April, okay. And uh, yep. worth noting there that release candidate may already be available or uh, soon to, to arrive. Uh, Chris Stern is release lead. With Chris Stern as release lead. Perfect. Correct. So we had security release uh, today. Uh, next major events. Uh, the scale is finished. Mark is back home safely after visiting uh, Los Angeles. Right. So next really is probably CDCon in May. Oh no, DevOps France. DevOps France, April 12 through 14. 12 to 4. Absolutely. And then CDCon in May. Okay, parfait. 
Perfect, perfect. Is there any other announcement, calendar events that uh, you folk want to talk about? No? Okay, let's proceed with the work that we were able to finish during the past milestone. So first of all, a public apologize. Uh, uh, Stefan and I uh, have let the poor Hervé alone last week because we were in holidays and we absolutely gave no reminder to anyone. So you might have been a bit alone last week and I'm sincerely sorry for that, Hervé. Um, next time, so self-improvement for the person going in holidays, in particular Damien du Portal, please remind the other and remind yourself. So at least raise the topic one week before doing the infra yeah. weekly meeting. I usually uh, uh, brag about being on holidays every day, a month before. So usually everybody knows. That's like my birthday. I remind people all the time. <laughs> Uh, so next week, uh, we were able to update the VPN certificate revocation list. It's deployed and it's OK. Uh, we received the calendar alert. Uh, the new calendar alert for the next version in six months has been placed. The issue is closed and everything is working as expected. Um, no, no issue. That's a usual task. Um, the credential for CERT.CI allowing it to spin virtual machine as Azure agents uh, were expired and we had to finish the work related to that topic. The last miles were being able to properly define a full Terraform as code automation. So we now have a credential with an explicit um, uh, expiration dates in the Terraform code, which is publicly available. So we should be able to monitor that. I don't know if you will have time for that, but at least it's visible publicly. Um, also on that issue, I've mentioned a topic that has been blocked by numerous people, including Hervé and Tim Yacom. Um, I've created a new issue for that. The goal is to use workload identity management inside Azure in order to avoid having to manage credential. So the issue that has been created with no milestone, we won't work on that right now. We'll just remove that password with the whole expiration and rotation and calendar event, etc. And instead that will be automatically managed by the cloud. That will be a nice improvement, but that wasn't the case on the issue. The issue was about renewing the certificates and the improvement was putting it as code so we can track it. We have one year for that now. Um, I've closed the issue related to Maven 17 um, because the initial issue was closed. One of the major changes we did two weeks ago was to increase the capacity on CI Jenkins IO. Uh, there were there were the hypothesis of splitting the workload on different node pools for the bomb builds and the other builds. Uh, alas, right now this uh, this at least two, since today until the end of the month we have removed a lot of AWS uh, kind of agents because we went clearly above our the, the billing limits from the AWS account. And adding two different BOM node pools is not uh, right now something we should work on because we don't have the capacity. We had to decrease the capacity. So what we did is to ensure that the Maven 17 agents might be waiting, but they should not be hanging or not working for hours. Um, just a note, given the decreasing capacity and the risk here, we might need to do a drastic reduction on the way BOM, the BOM builds are done. We might need to add a lock system to ensure that only one BOM build is done at a time, whether it's on the main branch or on pull requests. Um, so that has to be checked and studied during the upcoming weeks. Right now we'll see we, the shift the workload shift was done on digital ocean where we have credits. So that's why we close the issue. Unless someone object, we can at any moment reopen the issue. But if we reopen it, that will be a um, isolated topic. Because yes. That's not the same problem to solve. That was an idea and that will be an improvement, but no need to keep the issue open. Agreed. 
and if we need to if we need to use lockable resources or something like that to say that we want only one bomb build running at a time i think that's perfectly fine also it certainly is in when a flurry of pull requests arrive from dependabot for the bomb it can certainly be overwhelming to see a thousand plus jobs in the queue and yep. 200 virtual 200 machines allocated on ci.jenkins.io next step so that one stefan handled a new uh, so same problem as third ci but in that case it's for our packer job we need packer to be able to spin azure virtual machine to build our agent templates so you need a credential for that now that credential has been defined as code in this with the same pattern as third ci so next time it will expire same problem. It has been renewed for one year, calendar, etc. And we could study in the future using workload identity management for the same reason. The main difference between both is the set of permissions required for both. They are subtly different. In the case of Packer, the main challenge is that we use Packer with the default Azure mode, which was creating an Azure resource group each time it was building. So it creates an ephemeral resource group, puts everything on that build inside that one and remove it at the end of the build. Um, now uh, that we have restricted the credential because being able to create and delete resource groups at the whole subscription level was risky. So now we have one resource group where Packer put everything within. It's a bit less practical for, uh, for the Packer process itself. However, that ensure that Packer only have writing access inside that resource group. So Packer is not no longer able to reach the rest of the infrastructure on Azure. And we add to fine tune Packer and the credential for that. PKG origin SSL certificate. So in the long series of consequence of my mistakes by updating Python tree on that machine, that one is another one on the list that has been solved. Thanks, Mark, for your uh, certificate monitoring. Uh, we fixed by adding the missing uh, PIP package. Yeah, but without your monitoring, we would have waited for the expiration. That would have been worse. Clearly, we have a uh, room for improvement on our on the infrastructure team monitoring. We um, we didn't have time or maybe the priority on that. Both are reasons. But now it has been expired and it worked and it was and it, the positive consequence is that a bunch of SSL certificates were updated all over the platform, showing that the Let's Encrypt system is still working as expected. Um, what do we have? We have one issue that I closed um, after generating the notes or here for that. I forgot to post the message. So one of the plugin developer had a 401 issue when releasing their plugin. They retried a few hours later and it worked. Uh, the reason has been identified. The repository permission updated job that run on trusted CI run every three hours. And uh, the, the TTL of the tokens used to publish plugins is five hours. So every time the build runs successfully at the end, it regenerates the tokens. So if you have one failure, then you will have one hour during uh, while you cannot release. So the problem of the user is solved and we have tracked it. So I took on me on closing the issue and opening a pull request on the repository permission of data, uh, which aims to retry the steps at least one time because these failures are most of the time, at least on the path months, due to a GitHub API error. Let's say five or four or five or three uh, server-side server error. Um, Alex is okay on that. Daniel suggested that we might improve the native Java or Groovy code of the uh, repository permission updated jobs instead, instead of the pipeline. Got no objection on both. I understand one can be better, but I need help on the second one. I'm not feeling at ease writing Java code for doing so. And I don't want to spend time on that as much. So yeah, 
Uh, so we have a pull request with the uh, request for enhancement. The usual problem is okay, so issue closed. Unless someone object, of course. No question? Issues that has been closed with no work on it, or at least uh, only analysis. Um, Sounds like there was an issue on the Docker Hub description of the Jenkins inbound agent image that Alex cooked, but someone fixed it or maybe mixed up. We don't really know, but I, uh, we checked earlier today and it sounds like it's gone. So not sure. Uh, I, I wasn't there every day, so I someone already might have fixed that and we missed it. I don't know. But Alex closed the issue saying it's okay now. Um, we had one, two, three, four uh, account issues. Most of the time, as people doesn't answer, thanks survey for managing all of them. Uh, no answer one, two or three weeks afterwards. So we turn, my proposal is we close them and the user if, can feel free to reopen them if they need. One of the four one was flagged as a sensitive a few weeks ago because it's someone asking for the Ops Jenny plugin uh, takeover. So we asked them to contact internally in Atlassian. They say they will and never answer back. So maybe it takes time or it's not priority or it wasn't a, a legit request that can happen as well. Um, now, work in progress. I'm taking them on the order of the list here. Could not create accounts. Someone had issues where, with the account. Um, so that we tried resetting the person. The person says they've been blocked by the anti-spam system, but the anti-spam spam system always throw um, a Java stack in the logs. Um, neither Hervé or I were able to find this stack, so it's weird. But we have more and more of these users. Not sure if there is, is there something weird running with account app or, or these people are trying to over, not sure. Maybe it's chat GPT for uh, experiments. I don't know. Anyway, in that case, uh, try to reset the password and the person will be guided to send us an email to the new email. We will check the, by asking an answer by email, check the full uh, back and forth exchange to see if that person is a human and is not trying to take over. And if it's, the, it's not the case, then we can reset uh, the email in the account directly. Uh, main issue today, uh, we worked on EC2. Um, that started as a, a lot of EC2 agent on CI Jenkins IO marked as a broken states on the left column. Um, and it happened. It looks like there has been numerous issues with the EC2 plugin, starting with idle termination time, the time where the garbage collector for these agents, uh, it has an amount of time before passing and checking again. It was a 30 minutes by default uh, when GCASC wasn't specifying any value, which we didn't because we used to have something as soon as it was used by a job, the job finish, we used to have agent being deleted immediately. I don't know when it started, but it started to be 30 minutes. So once it's finished, you have to wait 30 minutes before something passes and worst case check if the agent gets deleted or not. That led to a lot of broken states, mostly because spot instances, but not only, which is still something we can't explain here. But the consequence is that the AWS account went clearly above the budget. So we did a drastic action by removing any kind of EC2 agent and decreasing the availability. We still have to switch fully infra CI from uh, AWS mach uh, virtual machine to Azure virtual machine. Uh, that one will be definitive once done. Uh, so we should be able to leverage the amount of uh, billing for this month and we should be able back to normal next month or maybe not. That will be discussed in April. But right now we absolutely need to avoid crossing the 16K uh, top limit. Um, any question on this? 
So likewise, the previous one, they will move automatically to the new milestone because that means we will still have work to do on these ones. Maven central package is not found on build agent. So really, I closed that one too quickly. I see you reopened it. Thanks for taking care of that. What is the status of this one? Uh, sounds like you're muted. Or is it only me? Sorry. Not mute. Uh, my problem, maybe? Too many no. mice, maybe? No. no. I, I don't know how to resolve it. I'm still in the same as two weeks ago. I need your help on this. Yes, so, sorry, uh, I didn't hear. I didn't cook the last for You need? What do you need? I need help on this. OK. OK, can spend some time on this after the meeting, if you're OK. So we keep continue working on this one. So that sounds good for you. Thanks. With that issue, next issue is uh, from James Nord about agent instabilities on CI Jenkins IO. Um, the ta so I, I can't grasp how to efficiently use Datadog. I, and none of us were able to find metrics, but the metrics should be collected. So maybe they have been deleted after time window we need to fine tune. But um, yeah, a lot of information on that issue to say one of the builds failed with an error message. Um, clearly it's not a OM kill because uh, we didn't see any uh, 137 code and none of the usual, uh, this kind of event are shown on the AWS or Azure console. In that case, it was on AWS and no alert about pod or container being OM killed. So that means that the pod, there was still an error. Um, assumption is that the pod was killed. So the machine could have been uh, removed or maybe the spot instance was deleted and removed and there might be an issue in the ability to retry or to, to catch the issue. Um, this morning we checked, this is a plugin and the build plugin function use retry, the retry pipeline function, and it should receive from Kubernetes the, when there is an event about a pod being deleted and not being drained or something ex exhausted in terms of resources. We didn't see anything and any retry kind on that job. So that sounds like an edge case. Um, James build was finally rebuilt uh, two or three times and the pull request was merged. Uh, so uh, we don't know what happened and we weren't able to observe. Thing is um, the timeline was during the 2000 builds of the bomb that was uh, on that gray area. So gut feeling and only gut feeling, I have no formal proof and I don't know, but I don't have any way to proof where does it come from. So uh, yeah, not sure what to do with this one, but any idea, welcome there. I don't know how to go further here because a lot of hypotheses and assumption, but nothing factual or miserable here, right? So my proposal is uh, as I asked um, James if he was able uh, to to see that problem on on another build or another plugin, and the last thing uh, for us to do is to check the spot history inside the AWS console. We have an history so we can see if some spot instances were reclaimed on that timeline that will explain the problem. So if it's okay for you, we'll move that one in the next uh, in the next milestone. And if we don't have any answer back from James uh, next week, then we'll just close the issue explaining why. Unless someone else uh, want to keep it or add details. No objection? Okay. We have as your credential for CI Jenkins IO. Uh, that one was due for two or three weeks ago. CI Jenkins IO wasn't able to spin Azure Virtual Machines and ACI container. Same expired credential. 
a manual credential has been generated on short term that is valid until June. Um, now we have to put that one as code. Uh, the tricky part on this one might be around the ACI. We will need not only permission on the virtual machine resource group, but also the ACI resource group for Windows container. But the rest is the same as cert.ci. And also same improvement on long term, that should be a candidate for workload identity management in the future. So, yep, that one move automatically to the upcoming milestone. PGP keys expire on March 13th, Mark. Um, I thought this one was related to the DigiCert that we had to generate the PGP key with DigiCert, but that might not be the case. So we should be able to operate this one quickly, at least right. for as, generating the credential. Right, as far as I know. Now, I hope that three years ago when we did this, we left ourselves some facility that will allow us to do this without requiring that every user install the new key. But I don't know that for sure. I know we've got to do the research to figure it out and we've got nine days to do it. Okay, so we absolutely need to start working on this one. Okay. Right. Uh, is it worth it to go to ask Olivier for help on this one? I think I think the first that Olivier would want is let's read the read the materials that were documented from three years ago, go through them and be sure that we understood what they say. And then if we have a question, we talk to him. But I'm confident, given the experience with the DigiCert thing where Mark said, hey, don't have any documentation. Olivier then said, yes, we do. It's right here. Look at this page, read this page. And it was all right there. So I suspect the same thing will apply here is that we've got documentation that was assembled three years ago when we last did this transition. And, and we just need to read it first to be sure that we, if we do need help from Olivier. Okay. Um, we need to check the impacts. Most of all, that's the most important part. Do we need to, can we just renew the key? Can we just extend its availability? Do we have to re create a new one? I'm not sure. Um, right, and 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 that's that's that workflow is the key question. It is the is the crucial question. Add a new yeah. key. Um, and also, of course, what if we if we have to focus on depending on the workflow? Do we need to trigger a new LTS and core weekly release? for signing again a new version with the new key if we need a new key. And and that I think we won't need to at last the last time we didn't what we did was we announced a, a we did a blog post the last time which said the signing key is changing please install the new signing key. Now I don't know if that kind of message will be needed again or if we found a way in our last exercise to allow that to be avoided again. So avoided this time. I, I, I'm sorry, it was three years ago. I don't remember. No problem. So that means we will need to uh, to check with the security team if there are any impact or if they have any information yeah, on that one, right? No, it, no, no security impact in that sense because this is all um, us. This is all provider authentication, info, provider provider validation information, not anything to do with with um, a vulnerability. So last time we didn't involve the security team, I think at all, and they were just okay. fine with it. Okay. My, my question to them will be more about the impact of renewing uh, the expiration date of a, an existing JPG key versus creating a new JPG key. What mm. we know the, the consequences uh, will be interested in the difference in terms of security pattern of both solutions. I see. Okay. And and in that case, they're experts. A good thing to ask them. That makes sense. Thanks. Out of space on the bomb builds, Hervé, do you mind giving us a, a summary of what has been done on this one? Uh, we noticed uh, that uh, the bomb build were using uh, MTDR 
volume to, to do what they have what they had to do and uh, the MTT were using the node space available space the cluster node space which were uh, 20 gigabytes uh, and uh, the build bomb the bomb uh, need uh, more than that so they were failing we increased uh, the cluster nodes disk size to 200 gigabytes and uh, increase their IOP, uh, IOPS and uh, uh, type uh, while we were at it. We now need to uh, maybe decrease this size to um, 90 gigabytes. It should be enough since there uh, are at most three builds on uh, on each node uh, at the same time, and the bomb build uh, are, uh, after the bomb build uh, we can see that uh, uh, twenty three gigabytes are used. That's a nice data point that we have. We know how much that uh, how much space we need on worst case for running bomb builds. And we also need to to check uh, some volume mounts as they are uh, mounted as overlay, as Docker overlay, and not uh, as an TTL. Okay. And so they are they are not efficient. As a matter of fact, uh, a good rule of thumb will be enabling the read-only flag for any container, whether it's Kubernetes pod container or Docker container or something else. Uh, that and then solve all the deny denying write issues by defining either Docker volume or Kubernetes MTDR or TMPFS, because these volumes are allowed to be written and the performances and the overlay, as Hervé said, are particularly poor. So in the case of our builds, for instance, Kubernetes plugin on Jenkins, as proven by Jesse, um, create an empty deer for the workspace where the build happen, which is good. However, um, on a default build, when you run Maven, for instance, it creates and writes data in, o, in the home directory slash .m2 repository by default. That thing is written inside the container layering file system. So if you need to read or write a lot of data, the performances will be really bad there. So we might want to mount explicitly the home Jenkins as an MTDR. Now the question is we know how it behaves with Docker. Docker mounts the, the directory and copy the expected data on the new directory out of the overlay, which is a few seconds more. But in the case of Kubernetes, we don't know. Also, the slash TMP directory is not a TMPFS and is not an MTDR. So we might want to define that as a TMPFS, a RAM disk that will take a bit of memory, but we have margin on these machines. Worst case, we use 24 gigabyte of the 32. So we have a few gigabyte left. So mounting this slash TMP to something like 500 mega will be enough. If it's full, that means something is going very wrong because you even a, a build, a Maven build, shouldn't write that amount of data on a TMPDR, particularly because Jenkins provide a workspace underscore TMP environment variable, which is a temp directory to write files within. So these are improvements. Um, Hervé, what do you prefer for? So do you want to continue working on that task? First question. I will not, but I need help to check where these, these volumes are defined. I didn't find them. Okay, um, no problem. Do you feel we should keep the issue open and work this optimization as part of the issue or the definition of done, or do you want to create separated issue as improvement now the problem is solved? What do you prefer? Um, keep this issue, I think. Okay. Because since I, di I did differently on other issues, that's why I'm asking, and both are fine. So, 
looks okay for you? So just a note, we don't have any more disk full issues for the bomb. Mark, can you confirm that you didn't see any more issues since uh, Hervé's uh, in operation on that? Confirmed. Uh, we cleared the backlog of 20 pull requests over the weekend and released a new version of the bomb uh, early Monday. So, or Monday sometime. 20 and... pull requests of the bomb during the weekend? Yes. Wow. Yeah. So it took it took quite a bit. Well, it was a lovely weekend exercise to try to get that thing cleared. And I'm glad that we did it because that meant that there were 36 dependency changes in the most recent release of the bomb. 36 is probably three times larger than our typical bomb size release. So yeah, it was it was time to catch up. Thanks very much for doing it. So that means six thousand pods were Rule of thumb, 6,000 pod, pod were executed. Well, one, okay, I admit one of, the, one of the things to catch up on those 20 pull requests actually combined six pull requests into one. Okay. So, so I, I, did some, I did some attempt to machine minimize, but it was still at least 10 cycles of the bill of materials. Therefore, you can approximate how many machines we spun up. Yes, it was a lot. So that means we... That that explained partly some of the increase of the AWS build, though. <laughs> but digital ocean took it's also it's part of the workload. So yeah. Yeah, yes. My apologies. It probably <laughs> was. I, I tried to keep the cost low, but you're absolutely right. It was not free to run that to catch up on those poor requests. Okay, so I will move that issue on next milestone. Is that okay for you, Hervé? Under the assumption that you need help and no problem, we can pair or triple on this one. Next issue is cluster private gates. So that cluster has been created. We already have some services running. And Eric, can you remind us the status on this one? The plan is ready. Uh, we now just need to decide when we execute it. Can you remind us the scope of the changes required for this one? Uh, it's uh, shutting, shutting down uh, release that CI the Jenkins that I owe to do the migration steps. Okay. So release CI should be the last mile before closing. Is that correct? Or do we have other services yeah. identified to be moved to that cluster? It's the last uh, service. We need to move from this cluster to the private one. The next are from the, I don't know, I didn't see it here, but it's uh, some public services. Okay. Um, how much time does the operation should be uh, approximately for you? Uh, I estimated it uh, uh, to one or two days in the issues. I don't think I'm. Not, I don't think we we need this two days. But yeah, to be sure, I put that as estimate. Okay. That does that make sense to plan starting Wednesday afternoon and then or this week? Is that what what would be the best datum for you? to start the operation, given your personal timeline? Uh, fine for this week. OK. Does it make sense for everyone? Do you feel we should start that, that part, that migration, considering if the plan is ready? Why not? OK. Hervé, you have to decide a daytime, put it on the issue, and then communicate then to the um, both mailing lists saying we will migrate this. Um, so we also have to prepare the communication well because that means we have to think about the VPN access because that will require the current user of release CI to update their accounts with our help, with our recommendation, so they can use the new private VPN instance. Yeah. Is that 
part of the plan? Is it okay for you, or do you need a bit more time on this one? No, it's not in the part of the plan. I didn't talk about that. No problem. So then that means uh, you have to. If, is it okay for you to prioritize first adding this to the plan, preparing the message, so people know what they have to do? If uh, for people who checked, like Christian, who checked release CI today for the weekly, what will do they have to do until next Tuesday in order to check and monitor the next weekly release? Okay. Um, so let's define a date time in the issue and communicate. Uh, you said VP, so warning, VPN access to update to private. Um, so were you able to check the availability of the Windows pool? Was it able to spin agent and stuff? You said we only have to migrate the release CI. Do we need also to run a set of uh, Dumi tests with pipeline that looks like the release pipeline, but that does nothing except um, spinning, except spinning agents? Uh, uh, let's discuss this after. So I don't, I don't know. Uh, uh, I've checked the, the plan I've cooked uh, because after this meeting, if you want, you're okay. Uh, yes, yes, but uh, my, it's not about the how, it's about the what. We need before planning the migration to be sure that we can spin up Windows and Linux agent with the same pod definition as the one we have currently. And since that wasn't the point I thought about, I okay. Asked you if we can review the plan I've done. Because okay, okay, so okay. the missing points since it seems I'm missing many points already. So okay, no problem. So many two. That's all. No, it's not. A, it's not a lot. And okay, so we need to uh, check the plan as a team. So yeah, we can spend that time as a top priority item after the meeting. And the date time will be decided only if we are okay on the plan. Is that okay for you? Yes. Perfect. Cool. Just last one, because just my mind uh, thinking, we need to check the Azure endpoint for the Vault credentials. Just think about this one. We will talk about that, but uh, it's important. Um, write it down, write it down. Yes, important steps to check. Uh, we have VPN. Agent allocation, and we have credential as your vault endpoints. Okay, uh, okay, okay, let's. The next issue is applied to Docker open source for the Jenkins CI and Fran Jenkins Forever organization. Oh, yeah. Uh, that one is on me. I need to send an email to our folks and we'll see what is their answer. For Jenkins CI Infra, I took it was already the case. Uh, so my mistake. Um, but I, I assume that this one should be easy. Um, I don't mind taking this one just because I sent them the email uh, last time. So that's why, unless someone wants to take the subject and I don't mind either. Um, if they say no for Jenkins CI Infra, uh, the alternative will be to use GH here as suggested by RV. Um, that could ease the access control and that could scope the images per repository since we already have a kind of airbag permission system inside GitHub. Um, oh, GH so, share is the one in GitHub. Okay. Yes. If not possible, could move to HCR GitHub registry. Sure. Ah, I need to write down. Um, Rose better her back already uh, managed per repository. Uh, risk in that case, outside the fact that we 
only have to change the name and create to GitHub tokens, but that should be okay. That will be pipe and library change. And instead of using the pre-built Docker Hub credential, we, we use it with um, EAT, uh, the GitHub application uh, one hour valid token generated on each call. So we should just wrap with credential with the GitHub app and that should be okay. Uh, the risk is more rate limit costs in Josh there. I don't know the limitation, but maybe it's free for us since we are sponsored, but that remains to be checked. I mean, GitHub Action have limits and Josh there has as well. Uh, for Jenkins, for Eval, uh, we'll see, we'll discuss. Um, is there any objection if I send an email to ask the developer what do we still need that one and would Jasher be a solution for this one? Because that one produces unsafe artifacts, so I would rather having that one removed from Docker Hub and not used anymore. But maybe I'm missing something and let's ask the contributors. Um, we cooked uh, that uh, we have a service that should be sunsetted and removed, Robo Butler. That one should be an easy task. It's a set of puppets. I propose to move it outside the next milestone given the work, but that one is an easy to take if uh, someone is bored and have some time to spend. Is that okay for you? Let's move to backlog. Hervé, I am not sure what is the Gatsby plugin Jenkins layout issues about. Can you, do you remember? Uh, yes, it's about uh, mm. an issue which has been done and uh, you wasn't, you were not sure if we should uh, create a separate kit action just for the semantic release action. For me, it's not needed, but you were not sure. A GitHub action? There is a GitHub action to do the semantic release on this repository. And it's the same, I reused the GitHub action from the Jenkins IO components repository. And you wasn't you were not sure about that, and you mentioned we might need to create another GitHub action for that. Uh, My con. Oh, a GitHub you... application? Do you mean? Yeah. Okay, GitHub action is a CI system. That okay? Sorry, that's why I was confused. You said GitHub action. That's not a GitHub action here, right? Or did I miss something? Yeah. Sorry, I, I don't understand. It's a specific process for this for the release on, on this repository, and it's using a GitHub app. Okay. And you were not sure if we should have used the same app for these two repositories. Okay, I see. Uh, yeah. Uh, the risk here is if one application try to write or perform a release on another repository that use the same GitHub app, then you could have cross repository writings, which should not be possible by default. So that's why ends my proposal of creating multiple GitHub app, one per repository, but that could be one per area. Um, the question is more, is it acceptable if, for instance, in our case, Jenkins IO components that you see on the screen, is it, oh, is it is the risk of Gatsby plugin Jenkins layout being able to write on Jenkins IO components? Is this risk okay, acceptable or not? Otherwise, we could increase the scope of GitHub app to, uh, let's say, an area of particular technology or services that have a link between each other. That's my concern. Hmm. For the Jenkins infrastructure, that looks like the same area. 
I will put that under the umbrella of whatever front end web stuff. Um, thing is managing manual orders, all those GitHub app start to be problematic. And as you underline correctly, or the last time, now I remember the amount of manual management and credential to, to updates could, um, could be a counter effects of trying to separate properly elements. Unless we have a GitHub app management as code in an automated way, um, your argument makes some survey. And I propose that you can close this issue. It's okay that we don't separate GitHub app because that will be another world topic uh, on that one. Does it, Does everyone agree on this one or do you think we should? If I understood correctly, we lower the, the workload by having some kind of risk, but lower level instead of separating everything and having to handle all the yes. credentials. Yeah, I agree. If, if it's okay for all of you, I will close the issue with a message about the trade-off here. Is Does it make sense for all of yeah. you? Uh, thanks, survey. That means the issue is fixed technically or functionally speaking, and we only have to put to, to write on the trade-off. Thanks for handling that. To be closed, uh, trade-off secure in term of security and permissions. We have another issue to work on grant access to some security folk to release CI. Uh, these people need to be added on both the, the VPN, the new VPN eventually, I'm crossing my fingers for this one, but they need a VPN account in any case. And then in the release CI uh, airbag system. Also, we will need to check the airbag configuration on release CI because right now anyone with the VPN access and authenticated has too much permissions. So we need to create an airbag matrix inside Jenkins. So that task must be done quite quickly. Not sure who is going to make it. I will move that to the upcoming milestone. By default, I will take it unless someone wants to help me or work on it. I will let you uh, decide if someone has some time to spend on this one. For me, uh, we won't have time next milestone, but I want to put it uh, uh, just in case. Update center job is failing. Um, that one, the root cause is fixed. I haven't closed it yet. Uh, there are some puppet management things to ensure that we have the correct uh, blob for install everywhere. Uh, and we have to perform a blob for upgrade migration. Uh, that could have consequences on a lot of scripts, but I think we will have to do this one quickly. However, that was the point last time, but I saw that Hervé was able to solve some issues on other unrelated repository, but that also used BlobXFair. And I don't remember if the the work that you did or Tim did on this area, Hervé, uh, were able to use a Azure CLI instead of BlobXFair. I haven't stopped. That's... Okay, so if it's okay for everyone, the definition of done for that issue uh, will be the second item here, meaning putting on the infras code a way to ensure that BlobXFair is installed. That should be explicit on Puppet because it was done manually before. Once it's done, we can close the issue. That will be the improvement to avoid reproducing the issue. The BlobXFair upgrade campaign should be a, subse a subsequent issues if it's okay for everyone. That won't be priority. That could be superseded by the migration to Azure CLI instead. That's why I want to make it another issue. Is that okay for everyone? Then uh, code signing certificate renewal process, that one is quick. We are waiting for lawyers of the Linux Foundation to discuss with lawyers of Digital and lawyers of CDF. And once then the CDF, Fatih from the CDF, will come back to Mark with a new DigiCert, um, a new certificate to sign the MSI 
uh, of Jenkins and the jar. The impact shouldn't be that big, but that should be better if we could have that renewed. Otherwise, anyone trying to run the Jenkins that MSI installer will be congratulated with, hey, no, don't. I'm not really sure of all the impact though. From our point of view in the infrastructure, that means we will take the new private certificates and put it on the Azure Vault, which is used by release CI through the Vault endpoints, hence my remark uh, earlier. Uh, release CI use it to sign the jar and the Windows package. And that needs to be encrypted inside the Azure Vault password system. So that should be only a Vault update. So we have to unseal the Vault, put the new version, seal it, and wait for the next release to trigger. Eventually, try a replay with a Dumi command that say, hey, do we have the five first character of the key inside the, just to validate it's mounted correctly. So nothing for us there that will move automatically to the next. That one is outside our hands. Any question on this one? OK, the rest is uh, uh, artifact caching proxy. Hervé, can you confirm that I did everything you needed for merging on Javadoc, the Javadoc project? Yes. I haven't checked, is it working as expected or did did you have time to check if it was working because it's once a week or? Uh, I haven't uh, checked on trusted. So okay. On CI, it was running as expected. Cool, so that means it uses ACP, right? Is It's using ACP on CI and it should not on trusted so that should continue working as before. Is that correct? Yes. Nice job. Is there any other ACP topic outside the issue you were dealing with? No. Are there other projects or can we say that one is almost being able to be closed? Isn't that lovely? And yes. that's a big one. Sorry? And that's yes. a big one. I mean, ACP, it's huge. So, but I didn't hear what survey was saying. Oh. Okay, um, so once we are sure that Javadoc is okay, uh, the last mile for us will be to check. Uh, can I ask you to drive that topic so you should be able to close the issue? The goal is to uh, check the measure from GFrog to see if we have uh, our top IPs and if they are eating GFrog less than it was in December at least. Mark might be able to help and Basil as well. And if you see we have decreased and we are not on the top, whatever, that mean, uh, yeah, that mean we can proceed and close that issue. Sounds good to you. That will be your uh, end of quarter victory. On the rail line, re sorry, yeah, go ahead. Oh, um, that HA work in progress. I wasn't able to work on this one. I need to focus on how to have a replicated LDAP, especially inside uh, Kubernetes. The last one, Compure and BMC plugin removal is just for information in our case. Daniel created it. If it's okay, we'll remove any milestone. It's just to track the work of, there has been a copyright infri infringement. Um, we received the notification by the GitHub, whatever system used and the Jenkins project had free day to comply. So it has been treated by the Jenkins board yesterday and all of the plugin related to computer and BMC has been removed because of the copyright uh, thing. The issue, uh, there, there has been an email sent to computer people by the board. Mark also copied the content of the email on the issue. There is no infrastructure action right now. It's only to track this. And Daniel did that as part of the help desk uh, uh, process. Any question? So I know that's a lot, taking a lot of time, but we need to check if we have new issues uh, that hasn't been triage right now. We have this one. I want to create a new account. Update social link on Josh organization. 
monitor the ACP disk usage. Isn't that one already done? Yeah. It's done, right? Okay, I will uh, take it's it. It's uh, my data dog uh, request to this one. I forgot about it. No problem. Uh, if it's okay for you, we'll take care of closing the issues to remove some overhead for you. I thought okay. from the CI think I agent in bump build it's the same uh, it's the same as the no it's why I'm not sure which one are you referring to? This one, yeah, but it's uh, one we are or you didn't filter out the no 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 yeah yeah I'm just filtering with my eyes sorry. <laughs> okay, so we have two account issue and one that should be easy uh, if not already yeah. done. Okay, so we'll add them and that one should be closed. Perfect. Other topics or issues or things that I could have missed? Nope. Nope, okay. So let me stop the recording for everyone watching us. See you next week. So stop. Sharing, stop recording.